This A and B talk will be looking at punk. Punk was a music genre that emerged in the mid 70s. It became a cultural phenomenon. As with any musical movement that becomes particularly prominent in society, the artwork and the fashion that accompanied the music is of equal importance. In fact, the music would not have been quite so effective without such distinctive art and such distinctive clothing that the punk musicians wore. Punk music was typically short songs which were really fast paced and whilst having some catchy elements were sung in an abrasive style. Often the lyrics were almost shouted. Very often the music was played in a, a less skillful way than was typical at the time with just three chords often strung together. It would be highly distorted. Lyrically, punk bands often were highly political. They had anti-establishment lyrics. They were demanding something and they were angry. Punk originally became prominent in America in the mid 70s, but the type of punk we're gonna look at started ever so slightly later in the UK. In around 1976, bands like the Sex Pistols started to form. Punk bands and punk fans looked very distinctive. They would often have spiked hair. They would wear safety pins as jewelry. Often their clothes were ripped or torn deliberately and sewn back together. They would sometimes have offensive slogans on their t-shirts. They would sometimes wear studded leather jackets and often they would wear bondage clothes in public. One of the most important punk bands was the Sex Pistols and this is a single cover for God Save the Queen, the second single by the Sex Pistols. The Sex Pistols formed in London and their initial career only lasted about two and a half years. They're widely considered one of the most groundbreaking acts in the history of music. This particular single, God Save the Queen, was released in 1977. It coincided with the Queen's Silver Jubilee. The Sex Pistols claim that the song was written without knowing that the Jubilee was approaching. The lyrics were clearly an attack on the monarchy, but they claim that they didn't deliberately write the song because of the upcoming Jubilee. However, it was released to coincide with the Jubilee and make a comment on what they thought of the monarchy. And as you can guess, their opinion of the monarchy was not especially positive. It comes from their album, Nevermind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols, which we'll talk about in a minute. Obviously, this cover was highly controversial, especially because of the Jubilee that was happening at the same time. Lots didn't think it was appropriate to criticise the monarchy at that time, but the Sex Pistols and people involved with punk did not think that celebrating the monarchy really connected with what was going on in normal society to normal people at that time. They felt like it was flaunting wealth and flaunting a positive view of the UK when they didn't really agree that that was the case. The original title of the song was No Future and they thought that many people, including themselves in the UK, had no real future with the current political state of the country. The song reached number one in the NME charts. So NME was a magazine, a music magazine, that only stopped a couple of years ago as a physical publication and is still available online. It reached number two in the national singles chart. The singles chart at that time was very important. Many conspiracy theories suggest that the song actually sold enough singles to be number one. The official number one is a song by Rod Stewart. I'm not sure if that conspiracy theory is necessarily true. You can read about it online. However, the song did do especially well, even reaching number two, and was very popular and caused a great stir in society. People either loved it or hated it. The lyrics are particularly controversial. The first line of the song is, God save the Queen, the fascist regime. Comparing the monarchy to fascism was obviously a bold statement. What you think about that is obviously for you to work out. I would always advise that people listen to the music when analysing the artwork. I think it's particularly important to know what the music sounds like and comparing that to the artwork. Indeed, I quite like the idea of looking at a piece of art and that enhancing my experience of listening to the music. And I think this artwork, which was created by Jamie Reid, does that particularly effectively. As the song continues, you get lyrics such as, God save the Queen, she's not a human being, and there's no future, and England's dreaming. 
Obviously, the title God Save the Queen is a play on the national anthem. And this image that Jamie Reed has created has an image of the Queen and has, has an image of the Union Jack, which you would typically associate with patriotism. However, the Sex Pistols were making an attack on the monarchy, making an attack on British culture. Their singer, Johnny Rotten, said that they didn't mean this to be an attack on all people who were English or British. He said it was very much about supporting people who were struggling in society. He said, we tried to shock everyone, but we didn't write God Save the Queen because we hate the English people. We wrote a song like that because we love them and we are fed up of them being mistreated by the powers that be. And of course, that sort of message did receive quite a lot of support from people who did feel disengaged with society. On the 7th of June 1977, the Jubilee holiday itself, the band did attempt to play the song on a boat named for Queen Elizabeth on the River Thames near the Palace of Westminster. A series of people were arrested, including Malcolm McLaren, who organised the concert, who was the Sex Pistols manager. This single cover was created by the graphic designer Jamie Reed, who is still practising today. He became renowned for this particular style of work, a cut and paste collage style. You can see the words God Save the Queen have a feel that they were cut out of a newspaper. That is called ransom note typography. In fact, the Sex Pistols text, which became their logo, looks like different letters cut out of a newspaper. Lots of people describe this image as blindfolding and gagging the Queen, so taking her voice away, but also making a comment that she doesn't see what is really happening in society. It looks like it is photocopied, particularly the image of the Queen. So that cheap feel, that collage cheap feel, became really a big part of punk design. This album sleeve is controversial even now. The bright yellow and bright pink colour scheme, plus the swearing and the sexual innuendo within the name of the album, is quite impacting to all viewers. You need to remember that at the time this was released, people wouldn't have been listening to it on Spotify. They would have had to go to a record shop to buy it and it would have been on vinyl. So these images would have been 12 inches square. So the impact is enhanced by the format of the record. Going past a record shop on a high street and seeing these images, which some considered to be highly offensive, would have been quite the experience. Jamie Reed went to college with the Sex Pistols manager, Malcolm McLaren, and that's where their relationship started. Jamie Reed was asked to create some of the artwork for the Sex Pistols when McLaren started to manage them. Jamie Reed has connections with the Situationists. So Situationist International was an international org organisation of social revolutionaries that was made up of artists, intellectuals and political theorists. And that was prominent in Europe from the late 50s until the early 70s. So that was Reed's background, a highly political anti-establishment background. This is another single. This is actually the first single, Anarchy in the UK. This was also created by Jamie Reed, and again you see that idea of destroying and breaking up patriotic symbols such as the flag. Again you see that ransom note typography and this idea of bulldog clips and safety pins. The feeling I get from this artwork is that the musicians and the artists are dissatisfied with culture in the UK. They want to change it. They want to create anarchy in the UK. Whilst it could be seen as an anti-patriotic action to destroy the flag, I almost feel like they're suggesting that we should destroy the way Britain was and rebuild it, put it back together, attach it back together in a new way. This is another single, Pretty Vacant. The idea with the buzzes travelling to nowhere and to boredom is a comment on British society and the prospects for young people. But the text, pretty vacant, also suggests that people are being dumbed down, that society is being simplified, that people don't have a voice. Again, you have this ransom note typography. This idea of demanding something back is really, really helped by the typography that is used. And here is an image of the Sex Pistols. These are the band members. You can see that distinctive clothing which we mentioned previously and we'll come to in more detail shortly. And this is the Sex Pistols playing live. 
The Sex Pistols' musical career was quite short. One of the most famous gigs allegedly happened in Manchester. It was supposedly at Manchester's Lesser Free Trade Hall in 1976 and is widely considered by music critics to be one of the most influential gigs of all time. Hundreds of people have claimed I was there. Allegedly only around 40 people actually were, despite the capacity of the venue being much more than that. In fact, many consider the Sex Pistols' impact took a while to gain momentum through the careful work of Malcolm McLaren to publicise the band. And this is Malcolm McLaren with his then wife, Vivian Westwood. Vivian Westwood, you can see, is wearing a God Save the Queen t-shirt. And you can see the Queen has a safety pin through her lip on this particular version of the R. You may have heard quite a lot about Vivian Westwood. She is still considered one of the most important fashion designers in the world, even today. But she became particularly prominent in the fashion world through her work related to punk. And here are some clothes that she designed. So you can see they have that DIY feel. They're almost ripped up and, and safety pinned back together. They also have close connections with bondage clothing, but also the idea of a straight jacket which again fits in quite closely with the musical message. Vivian Westwood ran a series of clothing shops such as Sex. Sex became a meeting place for lots of early members of the punk scene. Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood were interested in this sort of outrageous fashion, but they also were keen to connect the fashion to the music. Often you see the clothes the Sex Pistols were wearing were designed by Westwood. I think the distinctive look of the clothing is almost as memorable as the music and obviously this clothing is considered to be of historical importance and is contained in collections such as at the V&A Museum where this particular piece is kept. So what is the legacy of punk? It's widely remembered as one of the most important musical genres in history because of its challenge to the establishment and its impact. Lots of people consider punk to have died out in the late 70s. They felt that it was a nihilistic movement and a commentary on society, and once that statement had been made, it was no longer important. However, punk did become more mainstream. Indeed, the Sex Pistols did sign to a major label. There is a huge influence of those early punk days in music today. There have been several waves of punk, and bands such as Green Day and The Offspring, who were popular in the 90s, were clearly influenced musically by the punk music of the 70s. And you also get newer bands today. In terms of the ethos, there has been a return in recent years to a more independent approach to releasing music, which is similar to the early days of punk. There's also been a resurgence of people buying vinyl. I think current music fans are keen to have that combination of the artwork and of the music as a package. I think fashion has always been something that went hand in hand with music and that is still the case today. There's also a lot of music that may not be particularly influenced by punk in terms of its sound but is influenced in its anti-establishment message and the way it challenges different viewpoints. I would say that's been particularly prominent in the hip-hop movement but also in the current grime scene. Often those musicians will make statements that are against the government, but also they will try and do productive and proactive things to change society. For me, punk changed a lot and its influence is huge, both visually and in terms of the sound. And I think for me, it really highlights the importance of the whole package. The music would not have been as effective without the image and without the design that went with it. The message was very clearly enhanced by the visuals that went alongside it. So I would encourage people to have a listen to the music. You might find it a little dated, you might not enjoy it, but hopefully you realise its historical importance and how it changed society and music forever and how it inspired a whole generation of young people to get out, go to gigs, listen to music and think more politically. <laughs>